testing. We're live. Anytime you're ready. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, welcome all. Welcome to this time of celebrating Jeff Farley's life. The Farley and Barney family would like to say thank you. Thank you for your prayers and your support. They are saddened that we could not have Jack's funeral in person, but they are grateful to all who have joined online today in the celebration of his life. Let us pray. Lord, we know that when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the glory of the Father, we too might have a new life. For if we have been united with Christ in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. And our first hymn is Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Barney and Janine Barney, who will read our scripture lessons for us. 
Thank you, Doug, and thank you, Janine. Thank you so much for reading for us today from God's Holy Word. the gospel according to John, Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. He was not criticizing the disciples for their grief, because it was natural that they would be grieved, for he was going to be separated from them, and they would feel very much alone. Grief was a natural response to their situation. This morning, 
he would not criticize us for our grief either. He would offer us instead the same remedy that he offered them so long ago. And there are three parts to this remedy. Our faith, our friends, and our future. Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. It is our faith that brings us here today. Faith tells us that this life is not all that there is. That this life is only the proving ground for a life hereafter. Our faith tells us that death is not always tragic, that death can sometimes be the ultimate healer, and that there is certainly a fate that is worse than death. Our faith also tells us that life here is but a beginning, and that death does not interrupt its continuity. I think Jack Farley knew this. I know he was comforted by his faith in God and his faith in his family, and his faith in his friends. I know he was also comforted by the care that you all gave him, especially his family and the Windermere community. He loved his wife, Karen, whom he married on July 14, 1951. Jack first met Karen when they were both students at the University of Illinois. She was selling raffle tickets. She was a freshman and he was a senior. After waiting for her to graduate, they married and first lived in Chicago as he had started his career with Illinois Bell. They owned two different homes in Park Ridge. That was the beginning of a love and a, a devotion for over 70 years. What a beautiful legacy. They had two wonderful children, Glenn, who is married to Beth, and Daryl, married to Doug. I had the privilege of knowing Jack for nearly 10 years now. I think it's been 10 years, right? Visiting him, uh, he and Karen, singing hymns, praying, serving communion to them. And I have a few insights into his life and his wonderful hobbies and, and talents. He was the only child born in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, to Beth and Miles Farley on November 30th, 1927. Sorry, 1925. He was raised in the Baptist tradition and a member of the Baptist church in Evanston growing up. And later on, he joined the First Baptist Congregation in Park Ridge. He graduated from the University of Illinois where he was a member and later on president of, I'm going to say Ita, Eta, Ita. In Greek we say Ita Kappa Nu, so it is a little different than the way you pronounce it, but that's okay. The fraternity. It is the Electrical Engineering Honor Society and Jack was organized with everything seeking to make life easier for his family, I know. Jack adored all four of his grandchildren, Kendall, Taryn, Alex, and Janine, and his great-grandchild, great-grandson, Amos. He was touched by your love, and he appreciated your deep love in return. In spite of his health problems in later years, he rarely complained, and he lived his life to the fullest. I know that firsthand. Through the years, he remained a close friend to many, especially those in, um, that he sailed with out of the Wilmette Harbor and those at the Sheridan Shore Yacht Club, where he was a member. Jack had a great sense of humor. He loved his family, and he worked hard to provide for them with a good life always being very generous. His career was with AT&T and the Bell System, and early on he worked on television transmission and was very, very proud of his accomplishments. He was also very proud of all the accomplishments of both his children and all his grandchildren, too. We know he loved sailing and traveling with Karen and in their retirement years. It was a time of relaxation 
a time of fun. God created the life of Jack Farley, which we honor and celebrate today. Jack remained faithful, thanking God for his life till the very end, a life that we are very grateful for, and a life that was well lived. So many parts of God's creation come together to comfort us today. We are comforted by the beauty of flowers, that God created, and God created the beauty and the light of John Farley, which we celebrate this day. Our faith in Christ adds to this comfort, for Jesus, who is our friend, experienced life as we live it, and he experienced death as we must also. Then Jesus rose from the dead. His resurrection power is what he shares with us. Where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And so we find comfort in Christ's experiences as he assures us that he goes to prepare a place for us. The third part of this remedy is that we have a future. In my Father's house are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. Jack died peacefully on Saturday, February 6th and he knew he was loved. And we trust that he is now with loved ones and in the presence of God. We may be sad today, but we are certain in our faith, for God's promises are never broken. For God has prepared a mansion for his spirit to enjoy new life. Herein lies our comfort, our hope, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We come to this stage in life and we write over it the end, but God writes over it the beginning. When you're in high school, you wonder why the final event of after graduation is called commencement. And it doesn't seem like commencement to you. Right, Janine? You're going to leave friends behind. You're going to leave familiar scenes behind. And it seems very much like an end of something, and of course it is. But it is also the beginning of something else. And you know that now. Looking back on that, you can see that commencement is the right name for it. So today we look to the future. We know so little about it. But God has given us only a tiny hint, a glimpse. A, a preview. But both our faith and our friend assure us that the best is yet to be. You look back at today and at better times gone by with your dad, your grandpa, your uncle, your brother-in-law, your father-in-law, and your good friend, and you find comfort in that memory. Thank God for such memory, but don't just look back. Alongside your special memories of the past stands the anticipation of the future. Remember that we sleep in order to wake. Remember that today prepares us for tomorrow. Amen. And now in this time of sharing of remembrances, I would like to share several remembrances that have come for us to honor God at this time. The first remembrance I'd like to share comes from Kendall. Her fond memories of Grandpa. I have fond memories about time spent with our grandpa on a sailboat. When we visited Chicago, he enjoyed taking us to his club and introducing us all around to his friends. He seemed happiest on the water, and he enjoyed teaching how to sail, of which I have most retained the fun jargon word. He came out to Washington and chartered a sailboat in the, in the San Juan Islands, one of the most beautiful places on earth, 
and we sailed for a week with my dad, my aunt, and siblings. It wasn't all smooth sailing. Aha, it's a pun. I was about 14, and we argued a bit about how very little toilet paper he insisted we could use in the head, which was impossible for me to understand. What can I say? He ran a tight ship. Overall, it was a lovely trip with the most gorgeous sunset, and I recall knowing it was nice that he gained a real appreciation for this beautiful region where this part of his family lived. Thank you, Kendall. And the next memory comes from Taryn, another grandchild. I think one dynamic of my relationship with my grandfather was how I mastered to get his goat. I learned over time the things to say and do to get a rise out of him. Let's admit it, it was easy sometimes. My energy and attitude would sometimes be returned in exasperation, but it was our game. Grandpa and I had very different personalities and interests, but we were both stubborn. When I would make a joke or a jab, he may have acted annoyed for a time, but it, was, but it always ended with him throwing up his hands and letting out a chuckle. I'm glad that I was able to make him laugh, even if it followed by pushing his button. As he now looks down on us, I hope that I can still make him chuckle every once in a while. Thank you, Taryn. This next remembrance is from Glenn, his son. My dad from his son, Glenn. Dad gave me a moral compass and my love for tools. In me, he ignited ideas that I took higher, where he taught me how to change the oil. Decades later, I was changing out transmissions. As I glanced around my home, I looked at the sailing trophies that we won together, starting even before I was in high school. They are jewels on my mantle. He didn't, we didn't always agree. He couldn't relate to my struggles with math growing up. Disappointed that an engineering career would not be my path, yet Dad applauded my successes along the course. I did chart through my journalism. He feared my going off to cover a war and reveled as I reported from aboard a record-setting Boeing flight around the world. When he reached 80, together, we drove down to Kentucky to reconnect with his side of the family. He thrilled to a ride behind an L and N steam locomotive on that excursion. Did I say, and did I say he insisted on driving most of the trip? There were so many stories of the family reunion aboard a cruise to Alaska, along with three of his grandchildren. Alas, with the COVID lockdown, he could only see his great-grandson in pictures. My dad lived to a ripe old age. Nobody can claim at, at 95 that life didn't give him more than a fair shake. Yet even as his body and his mind were failing, for me, he was always there, always present, always part of my support. I felt he would live forever. Now my foundation is shaken. Love, your son. And from Daryl Hardy, his daughter. Dad taught me to read the wind, an, an, ele an electrical current, the stock market ticker, and a road map for travel and life. Dad liked to share his knowledge with everyone, especially his kids. 
Sometimes he took it too far and did not perceive when his knowledge sharing was not welcomed at the moment. I did not intend to follow in his footsteps, but I seemed to fall into them as I followed my own path. I started crewing in sailboat races off the Wilmette Harbor on his beloved dolphin celerity, thank you, when I was 11 years old. I raced almost every summer weekend with him for the next 30 years. We raced in wonderful and horrible weather, short afternoon club races and long distance races from Chicago to Waukegan. Dad was always a steady hand at the helm, and I had complete confidence in him to get us back into the harbor safely, even when Lake Michigan was throwing its worst at us. He had started his sailing days off the Chicago shores of Lake Michigan as a kid and continued them into his 80s. His den and house were filled with all the racing trophies he won and proudly displayed. Dad perceived in me my love of math and science and ensured I had plenty of exposure to his wonderful field of electrical engineering growing up. He helped me build some health kit, health kit projects. Is that right? Heath kit. Heath kit. I thought so, but maybe I thought it was a misspell. Heath kit. Thank you. Projects and took me to engineering open houses at Northwestern University, one of his alma maters. His love of an electrical engineering career and encouragement to others was evident in leading the development of career guidance films for Ita Kappa Nu, the Electrical Engineering Honor Society. He worked hard to ensure the films were distributed to high schools throughout the country. The early exposure worked and I followed in his footsteps and studied electrical engineering at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Both mom and dad's alma mater. Dad enjoyed visiting campus when I was there and reconnecting with many engineering professors that he knew from his student days. The department head at the time I attended was one of Dad's old lab partners in college. Dad was active in the Electrical Engineering Alumni Board even before I attended. Another footstep of his I would fall into as I served on the Alumni Board in later years. He was proud of the Marsha Peterman and Orange and Blue Loyalty Awards he received from the University of Illinois Alumni Association. Dad saw the value of and enjoyed investing in stocks early in his career, in his, in his career years. In retirement, he spent a lot of his time managing his portfolio and did a successful job of it. Dad retired when I was getting my MBA degree, so we often discussed what was going on in the market and particular stocks. His good, sound financial advice provided a solid base, basis on which to build. As kids, mom and dad, Glenn and I, would load up the station wagon and hit the road on summer vacations. We always left as soon as school was out in June before the crowds hit. Dad liked to get to places early and hated waiting in, li waiting in line. We went east to New England and their beloved Maine. We went west to Colorado, Yellowstone, and Glacier. We went south to Florida one Thanksgiving and east to Washington, D.C., and Williamsburg, another one. Dad did most of the driving, and Mom read the map after they had laid out the trip and had their trip ticks from AAA. I have followed in those footsteps with Doug and Janine where we have loaded up our sedan with the big trunk, grabbed our maps and GPS, and headed east, west, and north. I think we, actu we have actually logged many more road trip miles than I did as a kid, hoping our daughter 
enjoyed them as much as I did. Like my brother, it is very hard to believe that he is gone and that no more memories will be made with him. But there is a lifetime of memories to savor. I wish you fair winds and following seas, Dad. Love, Daryl. Thank you, Daryl. Now as we have our pastoral prayer, following the prayer, we will say the Lord's Prayer together, and I invite all to join us at that time. Let us pray. Gracious God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who having lived this life in faith now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant, John English Farley, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of his life, for all in him that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace that you gave him that kindled in him the love of your dear name and enabled him to serve you faithfully. We thank you, God, that for him death is past and pain has ended and he has now entered that joy which you have prepared. Almighty God, in Jesus Christ, you promised us many rooms within your house. Give us such faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails us, help us. Help us to trust in your love, which never fails. We pray today that you would lift heavy sorrow from us and give us good hope. Give us good hope in Jesus that we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad heavenly reunion in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we will listen to the hymn, Eternal Father, Strong to Save, which is the name, also known as the Navy hymn.
And now, before our prayer of commendation, I invite you to join me if you have it with you. We can say it together. This is the 23rd Psalm, which is the Mariner's Version. Please join me as you wish. The Lord is my pilot. I shall not drift. He leadeth me across the dark waters and steereth me in the deep channels. He keepeth my law, and guideth me by the star of holiness for his name's sake. Yea, though I sail amid the thunders and tempests of life, I shall dread no danger, for thou art with me. Thy love and thy care, they shelter me. Thou preparest a harbor before me in the homeland of eternity. Thou anointest the waves with oil, and my ship rideth calmly. Surely sunlight and starlight shall favor me all the days of my voyaging, and I will rest in the port of my Lord forever. Amen. That's beautiful and so fitting for your dad. Thank you for sharing that. And now our prayer of commendation. Let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, John Farley. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a son of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. And now the blessing of the God of Sarah and of Abraham, the blessing of the Son born of Mary, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit, who broods over us as a mother over her children, be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Let's conclude our services here at the funeral, and we will continue our services in farewell.